So if you have your website images loading horribly like this, where you just wait so long for the image to load, and sometimes you get like blank spaces in here, and the image does actually take forever to load, and the user experience is just awful out of the box, like the user can't tell if the image is loaded or not. You got image loaded here, not like on the top in here is not loaded yet. It's crazy and it's very, very bad where in the other hand, you can have it loading like this with really awesome placeholders in here. And it tells exactly the user what the image would look like with a really awesome kind of like blurred version of the image before it actually loads, of course, because we're using some slow network in here to throttle the network. And once the image is fully loaded, you're going to see that image showing up instead of the placeholder. It's just an amazing user experience. And that's the same awesome experience that InSplash provides when it comes to loading images with these really awesome placeholders and blurred versions. And of course, lazy loading the images once the user reaches the bottom. So image optimization is very, very important in the web standards or in a browser in general. So as, as web developers, we need to optimize our images in order to be ha better have like a developer experience. And as well, of course, we care about a lot about the user experience and the page load time. So that's what I was struggling with. And when I was like working on my own portfolio, trying to have blog posts and really high like blog post images, like 4k and 8k I was struggling to load all of those. And I was looking and digging deeper into how to better optimize this. And what are the best ways? And one of the best ways obviously is la lazy loading images. And what I mean by lazy loading images actually only load the images when the user scrolls into that image. So if the if the actual image isn't in the viewport, like in splash, as we all know, splash is a great, great website that offers a really awesome experience. So as Chris added some some network throttling in here, and some images are not loaded. As Chris it shows you some really nice placeholder. And if I scroll down, some images are not loaded and just keeps showing you this placeholder into the image is actually fully loaded. And this is absolutely an awesome experience because it gives you it gives you this really awesome placeholder that can tell what exactly the image would look like just from looking at blurred placeholder thing, which is not going to take that much, obviously. So if you look at it, it's crazy good. And it's super, super fast to look at all these images. And that's what lazy loading is it's blank in here, but I just go ahead and fetches all the images. So this is the perfect image optimization technique that InSplash uses. And I would try to use or actually kind of like reverse engineer how InSplash works and try to implement that on our own application. And we're going to of course use react with TypeScript, JavaScript, and you can use that with regular JavaScript if you want, but we're going to use react for this particular video. All right, so the first technique I'm going to be trying in here is actually using the native lazy loading feature provided by the browser and you know the new like HTML standards. So there is actually a lazy loading feature for images and web frames, but I'm going to talk only about images in this particular video. So for images, browsers like Chrome, Safari, and Firefox, like the newest versions, of course, actually support lazy loading by just providing an attribute to the actual image. So by looking at so the can I use web page in here for lazy loading, you're going to find like what are the support browsers. So if you look at that Chrome, it started from like 77 version to you know, the current versions, there is Firefox it has partial support because it doesn't have support for like, web frames, or uh, it doesn't really work for those. And Safari as well has some issues and partial support. So it's not like that widely supported. It's not like 100% is going to work fine across all browsers. So that's quite an issue. But if you go to Chrome, it works perfectly. So for example, in, in our web page in here, uh, I'm going to look like like as soon as the web page actually loads, it's going to load only the set of images that are going to be visible to the user on the viewport. So in the viewport in here, we're going to have like only six images visible, or just like a set of images because it has some threshold. So only like 13 images are loaded in here because I have a filter on images, and it got like 30 images on the whole web page. Now lazy loading, I have lazy loading here, if I lazy load as you see, it loads more, I can just go and clear the console for you to see. So as I scroll, it's going to load more images. And as like the user approach the other images, like, you know, eventually all the images are going to be loaded in here. And that's exactly what's happened. And this is really fine. It works really well. It loads images, it saves you data, it saves network bandwidth. If you like the user is not actually viewing that image, why would you need to actually load that image at all? So that's lazy loading is perfect. And the way actually to implement this is super, super easy. So on the image, in fact, this is just a regular image, because what I'm having in here is just a regular image, styled image. 
So you can just you can go in and replace this with an image in here. So this is a regular HTML image element in here. And it has everything, a key and everything. And the most important proper attribute that you need to add is the loading attributes with either lazy, which is lazy loading, or eager, which is like by default, which means like load all images when the web page loads, which is pretty bad experience, of course, because it's going to like give the user the impression that oh, the web page is not loaded yet, because you got tons and tons of images that you trying to load if you even though like, you got 100 images, and you're not of course going to reach 100 images, because you haven't scrolled just yet, which is quite bad as a user experience perspective. So that's really not good. So using lazy in here, we'll do the job and we'll do it perfectly. And then we use the native feature. But still, the native feature is not really that perfect. Plus, it doesn't have that best experience of like what Unsplash actually provides. Now, the second best approach you can do to lazy load images and have a great user experience is using a component called React Lazy Load Image Component. And this component actually provides you with a real user experience because it gives you like the state of image, whether it's loaded or not, and you can apply some effects telling the user if the image is fully loaded or not, you can like do black and white, or blur the image until that image data is fully loaded by the browser. All right, so for using the component here, we just import the lazy load image component, which is from the library, of course, and you just use that. And of course, you're going to give it like a key, you're going to give it the SRC of the actual image height and width, because it has to determine the height before the image actually rendered. So you can have like a awesome placeholder for the user before the actual image is loaded in. And you got some effect in here. So what effect do you want to apply? So you can have blur or black and white or everything. I think blur is is good enough for this. And you got a placeholder SRC. So which image you want to show like in place of that current image that's still loading before it actually loads. So if you go to our application in here and refresh using the new component, as you can here, it provides some awesome blurriness effect. So before it loads, before it actually fully loads, it does some blurring effect in here. And as well as as like the effect alongside that, of course, it's going to still do like the lazy loading thing. So when the user scrolls into the images, it's going to load that images. So that's what lazy loading is. So for example, we've got a set of images loaded in here first. Now I'm going to go in a scroll so excuse me, the other image is going to be loaded, it's going to have the awesome blur effects. So as you can clearly see it works really well with this really perfect like blur effect. So that tells the actual user, Oh, you got some image loading. So just hang on there and let the image load. So just wait a couple of seconds because you got like a really bad network connection or the server is not responding in time or something. So that's exactly what's happening in that case scenario. So as far as this solution and using this lazy loading components with this awesome blur effect, it's actually good, but it's not that good. In fact, it's not really perfect. And it doesn't provide that really well, awesome user experience as we wanted to have on Insplash. So I'm just going to give you like one reason why this approach is not really that perfect, you may still use it, of course, you can just provide some, uh, you know, tricks around it and, and just like try to provide some hacks around it to make it work perfectly but it's still not going to be that perfect. So if I go to throttle in here, I'm going to throttle the network to fast 3G, right? As I'm going to go ahead and try to this like fast 3G, I'm going to refresh the web page in here and see how fast or how the loading experience for a very bad network in here. So how is it going to be as it it shows you that the images are not fully loaded. So the blurriness is not affected only on the image. And so it, it tells you that you got this image loading kind of experience. And once of course, some some pixels of the image loads are obviously going to have this awesome blur effects. But before that, you're not going to have this really good blur effect. And yeah, so it's not really that perfect. Excuse me, you see the actual image loading, I, I, I don't actually like it that much. So the third approach that I find is actually the perfect approach that simulates the same way in splash is implementing their image optimization and lazy loading and having all this awesome blurred uh, placeholders and everything is using this blur hash library. And it's really, really awesome library, it's available on all languages pretty much. And the library work does actually give it an image and it gives you kind of like a hash that displays its placeholder and it looks amazing. And that's exactly what Unsplash is doing. So as far as I like reverse engineered, it looks identical to Unsplash's stuff, but maybe Unsplash is providing or doing like implementing their own algorithm or something like this. But this is more of like 
the best solution that you can go through here. So of course, this is open source, it's not like a server or something. And this is what it does in here, you give it us an image it gives you a hash, and you can just go ahead and render that hash. And this is the result that you're going to get. So any image in here, of course, you're going to like have a different hash. And of course, you can get this blurred image. And of course, what you can do is display this blurred image before the actual image is fully loaded. So the user knows, Oh, I got this blurred thing. And I'm looking into it's it's blurred image, obviously, but I, I can clearly see what the image would look like after it loads. So the user knows, Oh, I'm, I'm just gonna wait for this image to load. And this is a lot better user experience. Plus, you're not gonna have this reflow issue. If you're not familiar with reflow issue, you can Google it out. But it's more of like overflow issue with CSS and everything to have it work properly before the images are loaded and taking their original positions and places and everything. And the great news in here, react has this blue hash library and it has it in an easy, simple way that you can go ahead and implement that. So in a basic sense, how blue hash actually works is you can have like two methods in here, a decode method to decode the blue hash that has been generated by blue hash itself. And you got encode to encode the pixels into a blue hash. And obviously, the blue hash is going to be more of like very small string in here. So compared to if you do it to base 64. So some people say, Oh, I'm going to do it in base 64. Yes, you can fully do it in base 64. But if you have like, really large image, and you, you can delve scale, of course, but you still got problems with this, because the base 64 is like more hundred more than actually 100 characters, right. But this one is like, you know, 20 characters or 30 characters, it's it's a lot smaller. Okay. And the step that you need to go through is actually encoding the image. So this could be done literally anywhere depending on your application. But in our case in here, I did that actually and put them in a JSON. So just to simulate the server kind of thing. And obviously, what you want to do with these hashes is actually store them alongside the image paths on your database or something, because there are very small strings in here. And every single time you return an image, you're going to return that string right along with it. And that's exactly what I did. So I just use this include thing I use sharp and everything you can check out the code source uh, or the source code in my GitHub in here, and how I did that, like, you know, all the encoding process and everything. And after I encoded this, I put it onto a JSON. And that's what I did. So I put the image name, and it put alongside of it, like the blue hash of the particular image. And that is it. It's just that simple. And every single time the user requests the images, I'm going to return that blue hash alongside of it to make it work perfectly. And the result of displaying the blue hash placeholder, when the actual image is still loading is actually amazing. So for example, if you're refreshing here, that's the actual placeholder of blue hash. And as I scroll as you see still the blue hash. And as soon as like the image loads, the blue hash is going to be gone, obviously, because we we have some logic in the code doing that. So that's actually working absolutely fine. And as you see, it looks amazing, you can immediately see what the blur hash version does. Now, for example, if we introduce some throwing in here for fast 3g, refresh the web page, we're going to see a way much better experience as we did before with the lazy load components image that's we've tried like the react component thing. So as you see, placeholder in here is looking amazing. The images, all of them are still loading because you got a pretty awful network connection in here. And we got the placeholders, we know exactly what's happening, we can see all the placeholder in here, we can see the blurriness of the image, and we can see some sort of content of the image and we can know, oh, the image is loading. Yes, I'm, I'm an user, I'm going to just sit down in here and wait, or maybe go ahead and grab a coffee because you got like, a really bad 3g network or something of that sort. But it works perfectly a lot better than before. And it doesn't really cost that much. I mean, I don't know how like how I didn't know about this before. But that's a crazy awesome solution. And if you're wondering of how like the blur hash is actually working, or the technique we're using in here and what in splash is actually using. So basically, first what it does it actually loads and puts the placeholder like the blur hash placeholder here before the actual image is loaded. So it just puts that and renders that. So the user would tell Oh, I know this is an image actually loading. So I'm just gonna wait for it. And of course, if the image takes forever, you got this placeholder and the user still waits and like whatever. But once the image is loaded, it's going to be like replaced. So this is going to be completely ditched off removed from the DOM. And this will be completely like replaced with the original image, and the image is fully loaded. And of course, for the actual front end code in here, we're simply just putting the image in here, putting the lazy load image in here, that of course, it's going to be lazy loaded every single time we scroll the style blur hash in here, of course, I just put a style to have some CSS in order to make it work properly. And we just display that before the actual image is fully loaded. So this will look absolutely amazing.